Hello, welcome to the Dark Side of the Library podcast. I'm your creepy host, Carrie Carolyn of Dark Side of the Net, an old, old website you've probably never heard of. And I'm here <laughs> with my kooky co-host, Katie. Hello. We are going to chat with you today about the upcoming dark, spooky, creepy, morbid horror books coming out in September 2023 for adults that read fiction. But we haven't read any of these books because they're not out yet. <laughs> So all we're going to do is share books that we are super excited about. But I wanted to ask Katie, what are you reading right now? Oh, I'm reading Mavefly. Ooh. It's wild. This it's a very weird. It fits me. It's it's hilarious <laughs> and dark and and gross. <laughs> what are you reading? I have not been reading because my friends made me watch all four episodes of Wheel of Time season 2. Oh, but I nice. read the first page of a book I'm very excited to read this weekend, The Witching Tide. Ooh, awesome. Oh, I'm God. excited to Witch hear about hunts. that. Yes. So let's get started with some of the cool books. Katie, you have a list in front of you. Why don't you start us off? Sure. And by the way, if any of y'all are interested in any of these books, make sure to check out our show notes at darksideofthelibrary.com because September is the time to start stocking up on spooky reads for Halloween time. My first book today is Black River Orchard. This comes out September 26th and this is by Chuck Wendig. So big, big author. It is autumn in the town of Harrow. But something besides the season is changing there, because in that town, there is an orchard, and in that orchard, seven most unusual trees. And from those trees grow a new sort of apple, strange, beautiful, with skin so red, it's nearly black. Ooh. Ooh. I want to eat that apple, I think. Yeah, and make Maybe. creepy cider and all kinds <laughs> of stuff. Take a bite of one of these apples, and you will desire only to devour another and another. You will become stronger, more vital, more yourself, you will believe. But then your appetite for the apples and their peculiar gifts will keep growing and become darker. Ooh. This is what happens when the townsfolk discover the secret of the orchard. Soon it seems that everyone is consumed by an obsession with the magic of the apples. And what's the harm if it's making them all happier, yeah. more confident, and powerful? Yeah. Even if something else is buried in the orchard besides the seeds of these extraordinary trees, a bloody history whose roots reach back to the very origins of the town. But now the leaves are falling, the days grow darker, it's harvest time, and the town will soon reap what it has sown. Ooh. Well, I'm in. This sounds great. <laughs> this sounds this, really good. It does. <laughs> this is Black River Orchard by Chuck Wendig. I suspect that you're reading the book and everyone's happy and there's a big butt coming. Like, but, and then... Everybody starts eating each other. Hooray! Oh, so geez. my first book has the word black in the title, too. It is Black Sheep. Ooh. It's by Rachel Harrison. You might remember her from Such Sharp Teeth and Cackle the last couple of years. Black Sheep comes out on September 19 from Berkeley, a very distinguished publisher. So nobody has a normal, quote-unquote, family. That is so true. But Vesper writes is truly something else. Vesper left home at 18, as you do, and never looked back. Mostly because she was told that leaving the staunchly religious community she grew up in meant she couldn't return. Oh, we know how that goes. But then an envelope arrives on her doorstep. It's an invitation to the wedding of Vesper's beloved cousin, Rosie. It's going to be hosted at the family farm. Have they made an exception to the rule? Well, it wouldn't be the first time that Vesper's been given special treatment. Is the invite a sweet gesture? A, an olive branch? A trap? Doesn't matter. Something inside her insists that she goes to the wedding, even if it re means returning to the toxic environment she escaped. I would say bring whiskey. Anyway, <laughs> even if it means re reuniting with her mother, Constance. Hey, that was my mother's name. A former horror film star and a forever ice queen. But Vesper goes home and exhumes a terrifying secret. 
and she's forced to reckon with her family's belief in her own crisis of faith in a sinister novel. I don't know if there's any actual sheep or if she's the black sheep. So I don't, I hope there's not a bunch of demented sheep. <laughs> that is Black Sheep by Rachel Harrison. My next book is one that I keep seeing everywhere, like everywhere. It's Bright Young Women. This comes out September 19th. It's by Jessica Knoll. It's a mystery thriller suspense novel. Mm. So two women from opposite sides of the country are brought together by violent acts of the same man and become allies and sisters in arms as they pursue justice that would otherwise elude them in one of the most acclaimed, highly anticipated thrillers of the year. So that's probably why I've heard about it. The book opens on a Saturday night in 1978 hours before a soon-to-be infamous murderer descends upon a Florida sorority house with uh -oh. deadly results. The lives of those who survive, including sorority president and key witness Pamela Schumacher, are forever changed. Across the country, Tina Cannon is convinced her missing friend was targeted by the man paper re referred to as the all-American sex killer. You. Yeah. And that he struck again. Determined to find justice, the two forces, as they share or as they search for answers, leads to a final shocking confront confrontation. I will probably pick this up. I feel like this is similar. This is based off of maybe a true event, not entirely, but loosely. Uh, this is called Bright Young Women by Jessica Knoll. Ooh. Yeah. My next book is called Candelaria. It's a novel by Melissa Lozada Oliva. Your granddaughters are lost, Candelaria. Blanca, the brainy archaeologist, had to forfeit her life's work in Guatemala after her advisor seduced and then deserted her. Paula, missing for over a decade, resurfaces in Boston as a brainwashed wellness cultist named Zoe. And Candy, the youngest, is a recovering addict who finds herself pregnant by a man she's not even sure ever existed. Um, Whoa. okay. Now, none of this concerns you, of course, until a cataclysmic earthquake hits Boston. Now you must traverse the crumbling city to reach the Watertown Mall Old Country Buffet <laughs> for a reason you still cannot disclose, battling strange entities and your own strange past to save your granddaughters and possibly the world. So I am very intrigued by this because I love post-apocalyptic books. Um, they're describing it as... How the Garcia Girls Lost Their Accents Meets Cormac McCarthy's The Road. I don't think you can really compare something this humorous to The Road. Frankly. Right. Sorry. <laughs> but I'm definitely going to pick it up. Uh, the cover artwork, I thought this was a graphic novel because it's very cartoony. Yeah. So it wouldn't have normally called to me. But the publisher is Astra House. They publish amazing speculative fiction. So this is Candelaria. And it comes out September 19th. My next book is called The Death I Gave Him. This comes out oh. September 12th. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, well, what a gift that is. <laughs> uh, this is by M.X. Liu. This is a lyrical queer sci-fi retelling of Shakespeare's Hamlet as a Whoa. locked room thriller. I'm in. Like, I don't know. You can't go wrong. And it's almost the size of Hamlet. It's 432 pages long. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so Hayden Litchfield's life is ripped apart when he finds his father murdered in their lab and the camera logs erased. Oh. The killer can only have been after one thing, the Sisyphus formula the two of them de developed together, which might one day reverse death itself. Ooh. Hoping to lure the killer into the open, Hayden steals the research. In the process, he uncovers a recording his father made in the days before his death and a dying wish. It says, avenge me. With the lab on lockdown, Hayden is trapped with four other people. His uncle Charles, lab tech Gabriel, research intern Felicia, and their head of security, Felicia's father, Paul. Okay, I like oh. this. This is totally Hamlet. <laughs> Uh, one of whom must be the killer. His only sure ally is the lab's resident artificial intelligence. Oh, God. Horatio. Oh. 
(laughs) who has been his dear friend and companion since its creation. With his world collapsing, Hayden must navigate the building's secrets, uncover his father's lies, and push the boundaries of sanity in the pursuit of revenge. Oh, so this is the death I gave him. The cover art is very cool, very like sci-fi punk. It is by M. X. Lou. I think I'm out. That's too many characters to keep track of. I can't. My poor brain. <laughs> ah, it is a lot. My next book is The Devil of the Provinces. Now it's coming out in paperback. It's an independent publisher, Coffee House Press. It's by Juan Cardenas. It's been translated from the original. After a series of failures, a biologist returns to his hometown to live with his grieving mother. Aww. But strange events unravel what he thought he knew of his past, his present, and himself. So the biologist returns to Colombia after 15 years abroad and quickly becomes entangled in the trappings of his past and his increasingly bizarre present. There's the unsolved murder of his brother. There's a boarding school where school where girls give birth to strange creatures. Oh boy. This is this is getting better. And there's a chance encounter with his irrevocably changed first love. He gets a biotechnology job offer and he's gradually drawn into a web of conspiracy. He might be destined to remain in the city he'd hoped to never see again. In the devil of the provinces, nothing is as it seems. Oh boy. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure about that. Sometimes I think the plots might be too many things. Yeah. yeah. My next book is Dracula Daily, reading Bram Stoker's Dracula in real time with commentary by the internet. This comes out September 19th. Uh, this sounds kind of hilarious. The wildly popular email newsletter that has been described as a, a, quote, internet sensation and the coolest book club on the internet is breathing new life into Bram Stoker's classic vampire novel. So thanks to Dracula Daily, this newsletter, this email newsletter that delivers the classic vampire novel in bite-sized chunks, an old story about the undead getting a new life, says NPR. Uh, <laughs> this also combines Stoker's original text alongside reader-generated uh, content. This version of Dracula is a fun and immersive experience, perfect for the vampire scholars. So you'll find inside a rich selection of artwork, too, and memes from the newsletter. So this might have been a ki- maybe kind of a nonfiction-ish, but it's it's alongside Dracula itself. So I was like, maybe this is kind of a bit of both a fiction and nonfiction with commentary by the internet talking about Dracula while you're reading it. So if that's something that's of interest to you, or if you've been a part of the Dracula daily, definitely check this one out. This is by Matt Kirkland. That would be good for your collection. If you're a Dracula completist collector. Right. Yes. Yes. Wasn't there an account years ago on Twitter, like over 10 years ago, where they just tweeted sentences from Dracula every day for a year? I think, I think right, there was. Actually. Yes. <laughs> they might have done that with Frankenstein, too, actually. Oh, actually, yeah. Yeah. My next book is called Exadelic. It's by John Evans. It came out September 5. When an unconventional offshoot of the U.S. military trains in an artificial intelligence in the dark arts that humanity calls black magic, the AI learns how to hack the fabric of reality itself. It can teleport matter. It can confer immunity to bullets. That would be very nice. Wow. And it decides that obscure Silicon Valley middle manager, Adrian Ross, happens to be the primary threat to its existence. Soon, Adrian is on the run, wanted by every authority, with no idea how or why he could be a threat. His predicament seems hopeless, his future non-existent. But when he investigates the AI and its creators, he discovers his problems are even stranger than they seem, and he unearths revelations that will propel him on a journey and a love story, unfortunately. That's not what I'm looking for in a book like this, but okay. (laughs) He will be propelled on a journey across worlds, eras, and everything everywhere all at once. 
Okay, tour uh, books. Tour wow. books. I don't know. Oh, tour. I'll keep an open mind, but I'm probably not going to order it, but I might flip through it at the library. This is Exadelic, and they spell it E-X-A-Delic, and it's mm. by John Evans. My next book is Hemlock Island. This is by Kelly Armstrong, and it comes out September 12th. Uh, Lainey Kilpatrick has been renting her vacation home to strangers. The invasion of privacy gives her panic attacks, but it's the only way she can keep her beloved Hemlock Island. The only thing she's owned after a pandemic-fueled divorce. Uh-oh. But broken belongings and campfires that nearly burned down the house have escalated to bloody bones, hex circles, and now terrified renters who fled after <laughs> finding blood and nail marks all over the guest room closet Ew. as though someone tried to claw their way out and oh. failed. Oh. oh, that's just not good. <laughs> Uh, so when Lainey shows up to investigate with her teenage niece in tow, don't do that. Oh, my God. Okay. Anyway, she discovers that her ex, Kit, has also been informed and there and is there with Jayla, his sister and for and her former best friend. Oh, there's too many characters already. <laughs> so then Sadie, another old high school friend, charters over with her brother, Who's now a cop. So I think I'm counting like seven people are now investigating this house. <laughs> there are tensions and secrets, whispers in the woods, and law or and before long, the discovery of a hand poking up from the earth, then the body that goes with it. But by that time, <laughs> someone has taken off with their one and only means off the island. And they're trapped with someone or something that doesn't want them leaving the island alive. Oh, goody. All right. So seven of them trapped on this creepy island all together. Niece and toe. Oh, goodness. <laughs> so this is Hemlock Island. This is by Kelly Armstrong. I think I need to read it. It sounds awesome. But then I'll probably <laughs> never enjoy going to my own vacation house ever again. <laughs> no, that would ruin everything. Oh. I'm sure you have all heard much about my next book because it is Stephen King's newest. The first of two books he's coming out with this fall. Ooh. It's Holly. Woohoo. Now, confession time. Holly Gibney was a character in Finders Keepers, which I did not read, and a tough private detective in The Outsider, which I did not read. <laughs> That's so, okay. <laughs> yeah. You can't read every King book. He writes too fast. I'm not yes. complaining though. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So Holly returns as her own character in her own book. Yay. Ooh. She used to be shy and she was a recluse in Mr. Mercedes, which I also didn't read. And <clears throat> in her, in the new novel, she's on her own and she's up against a pair of unimaginably depraved and brilliantly disguised adversaries. Now I checked Goodreads to see would I enjoy Holly if I hadn't read the other book she was in and everyone's like, sure, it's great. Okay. So a lady named Penny calls the Finders Keepers Detective Agency, hoping for help locating her missing daughter. Holly is reluctant to accept the case. I don't know why. Oh, because, sorry, they're going to tell us why. Her partner, Pete, has COVID. Her very complicated mother has just died. And Holly is meant to be on leave and taking a break. But something in the mother Penny's desperate voice makes it impossible for Holly to turn her down. So mere blocks from where little Bonnie disappeared live a couple of professors, Rodney and Emily. They're the picture of bourgeois respectability. They're married octogenarians. They're devoted to each other. And they're retired, semi-retired, lifelong academics. Oh, sounds like nice people to have tea or dinner with. But, haha, there's a but. They are harboring an unholy secret in the basement of their well-kept book-lined home. <gasps> One that might be related to Bonnie's disappearance. Bum, bum. And it will be nearly impossible to discover what they're up to because they're savvy and patient and ruthless. <laughs> I think I want to read it. Yeah, <laughs> sounds good. That's Holly by Stephen King, and it came out on September 5, and basically everybody on Bookstagram and Book Talk and Dark Side of the Library the people that we follow, everyone's reading this right now. Wow. That, yeah, I mean, no surprise, right? <laughs> <laughs> My next book, and 
I don't know how it already has like 15,000 ratings on Goodreads. What? Because it came out September 5th, but it's called Inmate. It's by Sebastian Fiztek or Fitzzek. A missing child, a desperate t- father, and a terrible secret. Serial killer Guido T. Guido. Oh, I, yeah. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> I hope he's Italian. <clears throat> Guido T has already confessed to two horrific child murders and led the Berlin police to the horribly disfigured bodies. Oh, this is sad. The police are sure he is also the kidnapper and murderer of six year old Max, who disappeared without a trace a year ago. But now Guido T, who is being held in the high security ward of a psychiatric prison hospital, is staying silent. The investigators have no reliable evidence, and without the prisoner's statement, Max's parents will have no certainty and will never be able to say goodbye to their son. Oh, so sad. But then an investigator from the Homicide Commission makes Max's desperate father an unbelievable offer. He will smuggle the distraught parent into the hospital where Guido T is imprisoned. <laughs> Max's father will be listed as a fake patient equipped with a fake medical record. This mm. sounds like a terrible idea and this very is unprofessional. Really complicated and unprofessional. <laughs> yes. Uh, he will be as close as he possibly can to the child killer and plans to force the killer into a confession because nothing is worse than uncertainty, or so he thinks, until he, as an inmate, learns the gruesome truth. And hopefully he doesn't die for it. <laughs> so this is called Inmate. This is by Sebastian Fitzzek. And it came out September 15th. And it's got a 4.2 on Goodreads. So it's got to be mm. good. Interesting. <laughs> What's next for you? <laughs> My final book today. And, and be aware that this is a two or three parter episode. Because there's so many good dark books coming out this fall. So be sure to stop by at Dark Side of the Library on Instagram and Facebook or darksideofthelibrary.com to find our other podcasts. Yeah. My final book today is In These Hallowed Halls. It's a dark academia anthology. There's a whole bunch of authors in here, including Olive Blake, ML Rio, etc. Uh, who else? David Bell, Lane Fargo, JT Ellison, Kelly Andrew, Phoebe Wynn, Kate Weinberg, Helen Grant, Tori Bovolino. I haven't heard of all of those. Wow. In these stories, Retribution visits a Lothario lecturer, the sinister truth is revealed about a missing professor, a forsaken lover uses a seance for revenge, (laughs) two graduates exhume the secrets of a reclusive scholar, and horrors are uncovered in an obscure academic department. So if you like the dark academia lifestyle, as we all do, this is In These Hallowed Halls, an anthology and the publisher is Titan Books, so you know it's going to be good. It comes out September 12th. I'm actually kind of excited for it, to be honest. Oh, yes. Yeah. And that is our final list for part one of adult fiction coming out in September 2023. Make sure to stay tuned for our part two or maybe even a part three because there are a ton of books coming out, like Carrie said. And make sure to follow us on our socials. You can find all of us at Dark Side of the Library or if you are watching over on YouTube, it's in the description down below. Uh, And make sure to tune in every Wednesday and Friday, though, because the spooky season is coming up and we are doing a lot more, maybe even tune in on Mondays as well for some Woo. new episodes. Woohoo! And make sure to tune into our Amazon live channel at uh, amazon.com slash live slash dark side of the library. We're going to be live streaming a lot of cool Halloween stuff, more than just books, any sort of horror, witchy, vampire, zombie aesthetic, anything you can think tarot. of. Tarot. Lots yes. of tarot. Yeah, we've got a ton of tarot. I have boxes now of tarot <laughs> cards. So uh, tune into that as well. Thank you so much for listening. We will see you next time.